If your brothers come closer to the podium so we can start, come closer if you don't mind. أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله بسم الله رب العالمين اللهم صل على محمد سيد المرسلين وخاتم النبيين وحجة رب العالمين المنتجب في الميثاق المصطفى في الظلال المطهر من كل آفة البرية من كل عيب المعمل للنجاة المرتجى للشفاعة المفوض إليه دين الله السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك عليك مني سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله آخر العهد مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين وعلى أخيه أبا الفضل العباس وأخته العقيل زينب ورحمة الله وبركاته قال الله العظيم في محكم كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقل ربي أعوذ بك من همزات الشياطين وأعوذ بك يا ربي أن يحضرون أمنا بالله Sadaq Allahul Aliyul Azim For the hasty appearance of Imam Sahib Al-Asri Wa Al-Zaman Arwahuna Wa Arwahul Alameen Laturab Maqdamihi Al-Fida Allahu Salawat Normally when we get closer to the nights of Qadr The centers they pack up more and more and and this is first time I see a center that after offering such a generous iftar and prayer and dua and the Quran, I see that people come here as if this is a restaurant. They eat, they finish up. That as soon as the iftar is packed up, everyone packs their flask and the teacups and they leave the center. I hope, I hope that we can change the attitude of some that have this kind of a reaction to these nights. We are getting closer to the nights of Qadr. And for such a center with this magnitude, with this big hall, I was thinking that it's different. But you don't get whatever you wish for. Most of the time, 99% of the time, you get the opposite of it. We are getting closer to the nights of Qadr. As I mentioned last night, that these nights are special. We're not here just to come and socialize, offer iftar, and then we go home to relax. These nights should be the nights that we recite Quran, we recite dua, now the idea must be changed because this is an offering from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you look in the speech of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, he doesn't mention the sufra, the come and eat and leave. He mentions that these nights are the nights of mercy, the nights of forgiveness. This is the whole idea of these nights, that we have to seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and get the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah from tomorrow night, and I offered the President Alim, Samahat al-Shaykh, on the iftar, I will speak with the people because I was shocked today, to be honest, of how this is happening. And I was hoping that people understand the magnitude of these nights. Inshallah tomorrow night, we have a different approach without uh, making them, forcing them to stay, I hope they understand. And we are very early. We have a very good timing. So we can make up, even if you have work tomorrow or 
engagements here you have to attend to, you still have time. The topic for tonight, after that brief introduction into what happened tonight, the topic for tonight is about slavery and freedom. Are we slaves or are we free? That is the question. Now you might say, we are free. We live in the 21st century. We are free people. This is different from a person who is a slave with shackles around his hands and his legs, forced to work in the cotton fields until his hands bleed. Slavery here in the sense of being slave to your own desires, being slaves to those, those temptations, those urges. That is the meaning of that. that I want to tell, ask you, are you a slave or are you free? Are we slaves to those urges or are we free people? And we don't have that imprisonment around us. In this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran al-Kareem, وَقُلْ رَبِّ يَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنْ هَمَزَاتِ الشَّيَاطِينِ وَعُوذُ بِكَ رَبِّ أَنْ يَحْضُرُونَ And say, my Lord, I seek refuge in you from the incitements of the devil. And I seek refuge in you, my Lord, lest they be present with me. They are present. When it comes to Salat al-Fajr, for example, we have two voices in your mind. One on the right, one on the left. The one on the right tells you, Qum, get up, wake up, pray the Salat. The one on the left, what does it say? Sleep. That is the shaitan, and that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Get up, pray. Make up the most of your night. So the shaitan is there, the devil to lure you into his sight. A person came to Shaykh Murtadar Ansari, and he said to the Shaykh, I had a dream last night where I saw Shaitan, the devil, Iblis al-Abalisa, standing in his true form. And in front of him, in his hands, he has chains, different colors and sizes, and he has ropes, and he has threads. I came to the Shaitan and I asked him, what are those that you're holding in your hand? Here, Shaitan himself, He's explaining this where he says every person is different one is lured in to me and he's attracted to me when it comes to woman others pride others alcohol everyone is different some power they seek power some they seek wealth and I have different colors because every person is attracted to one thing. And I try with man, with mankind, different of them. I see which one he's attracted to. One might be attracted to wealth and the other might be attracted to power. One might be attracted to woman and the other might be attracted to alcohol. So I see which one he desires and I lure him in to my side. Now, why there are different sizes, he asked Shaitan. He says, because everyone is different. Some, they have that resistance. They resist me. They try to run away. They try to not to be lured in and hunted down and catched by me. If you see, when a hunter goes hunting, he has tools. He uses a shotgun or a rifle and a knife and might be using, he might be using an arrow. He uses different things 
for different animals. And he says, this is what I use for this animal. That is what I use for that animal. Even if a person, when he goes for fishing, when he buys the net, when he buys the hook, he knows that that hook will attract that kind of a fish. Same thing with shaitan. Shaitan here says that everyone is different. And you get in this lesson, this words from the shaitan himself. From the shaitan himself. Some people that resist. I try with them different things, different sizes. Some people are easier. There are different types of people. Here he asked him, he said, I see a broken chain. What happened with that? He said, last night I tried with Sheikh Murtad al-Ansari. Many times. He was pulling, I was pulling. He was pulling, I was pulling. In the end, I gave up and he broke the chain. And he said, what about me? The person was dreaming. He said, what about me? What is the one that you use for me? He said, I don't use any of those. As soon as I see you, I wave to you, you come running to me. I don't need to use any of those ropes, chains and threads. As soon as I see you, I just wave to you from the dark. You run toward me. And how many people are like this today? In the month of Ramadan, the Prophet wasallam says that the shayateen, the devils are chained. The gates of hell is closed, shut. But you still have shayateen al-ins. We have shayateen al-jinn and we have shayateen al-ins. Now, he came to Shaykh al Ansari and said, Shaykh and I, I saw this dream, such and such and such. He was saying that to the Shaykh. What happened last night? The Shaytan says that he gave up with you and the chain broke. He replied that last night my wife was about to give birth and I needed money. I had nothing except for some money that was trusted to me. Amana. I was thinking, well, and that is not haram that I go take some of that money because the person who gave me that money, he told me, if you need any of it, take and you can pay me back. I went to take some of it. I get closer to that room where the money is. But I walk back to my wife. You see, what is that? I ask you, what is that happening right there? That is the sara' bainal, al sara' al-dakhili, we call it. And that is what happens every day. That is called the internal conflict. Yourself, one part says yes, the other part says no. The one that says yes will make up thousands of excuses, thousands of points, not valid, valid, doesn't matter, just to make you confident to do that then. So I had the internal conflict. Me going back to my wife and then I'll go back to the room because I need that money. My wife is about to give birth. I need money to bring the midwife. I need to spend on her, buy food. I have nothing in my position except for that money. Until the end of midnight, I made my choice. I said that I will not go near any of that money. And I went back to my wife. A horse, if you go horseback riding, and I'm sure you have it here. When you ride in a horse, the person in charge tells you that there is a bridle, there is a leash. When you are sitting on the horse, we call it lijam. You pull the horse right, it will go right. You pull it left, it will go left. Like the car that has a steering wheel. If you want the horse to stop, not to run, you pull both of them tight. Why? Because the bridle is holding its teeth and it will choke the horse for it to stop right there. That is the nafs. If your nafs is in your hands and you pull it to right, you pull it to right, to left, according to your own desire, not the nafs. 
This is how you control it. You pull it to the right, you pull it to the left. But sometimes what you find is some nafs are so out of control. They are like wild horses. No matter what you do, nothing happens to it. Why? Because all your life you've been telling it, okay, yes, yes, yes. It's like a spoiled child. When a spoiled child wants something, you provide and you provide and you provide and you provide. When the child grows up, you become spoiled. So if you don't give in to their wishes, they collapse. The whole fundamental of that will collapse because he never said to it, no. No, you never said no. That's what happens to the nafs. When you always say yes to it, becomes that, like that wild horse. And what happens to that wild horse? It will run and run, and even if there is a steep valley, it will fall right into it. The nafs is the same thing. The nafs will take you to domination, doesn't care, to the hellfire, to inferno. As long as you say yes to me, I'm happy with you. But if not, then we have a problem. And that problem is that you going to be in internal conflict with me 24-7 a day. Now, in history, you find two people. There is an example of two people. Of course, there are others, but I want to mention these two. One is Omar ibn Sa'd. Omar ibn Sa'd is the general that was in charge of Yazid's army in Karbala, Omar ibn Sa'd. When he was offered the governorship of Ray, they told him, we give you the governorship of Ray if you bring us the head of Hussein. Go kill Hussein, Ibn Ali, Ibn Fatima, Ibn Bint Rasulullah. Huh? Bring his head in, take his woman captive to us. We will give you the governorship of Ray. That means the whole uh, Persian Empire at the time. That whole area will be in your charging. You will be charged. You will be the governor of that whole area. You see, it is mentioned in history that Omar al-Sa'ad, when he heard this, he told Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, give me time to think. That is the first mistake. What is the answer here? No. Me, kill Hussein, to get the governorship of Ray, that doesn't work. But he said to him, give me the night to think. So he went home and that was what? The internal conflict. Sara' and nafs. And he started thinking, uh, like a mathematician on a board, start playing around with the numbers. If I kill Hussein, you know where I end up. If I kill Hussein, that is going to my doom. That's it. But there is a governorship of Ray. See, one side is saying yes, the other side is saying no. And that is the sara'ah, that is a conflict that he's going through. Until dawn, he was walking around in his backyard, thinking, 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 until dawn, what he decided? He said, yes, I will kill Hussein, and in one or two years, I will ask Allah's forgiveness. And he made his choice. He gave in. To those desires, Khasara dunya wal akhara. After killing Imam al Hussein, Ali Abdul Salati was salam, no governorship of Ray. They didn't give him anything. And they even told him, never come close to the castle. Don't even come here because you have killed the grandson of the Prophet and he doesn't look good. The people are not happy. And we have to get the people to be staying happy. So don't come close to here until his death and he was killed on his bed as imam al hussein alayhi wa salatu wa salam said to him in karbala sallatallah alayka man yadbahuka ala firashik mukhtar sent one of his soldiers and he said to him go kill him even if he's sleeping and he came there and he cut his head off and brought it to mukhtar al-thaqafi 
And Mukhtar says, Subhanallah, this is what the Imam said in Karbala, and this is what happened. You have another person called Hur ibn Yazid al Riyahi. Hur had the same conflict, had the same internal conflict, thinking, What do I do? Kill him, not kill him. Kill him, not kill him. Be part of this or not be part of this. But Hur made one good decision and one first step that brought him closer to making the right decision. And what was that first step? It's when Imam al Hussein said to Hur, Fakalatka ummuk. May your mother sit and weep for you and cry for you. That means you die and your mother sits and mourns for you. Hur said, Ya Aba Abdullah, if you weren't the son of Fatima to Zahra, Salamullah alayha, I will say it's the same to you. But you are the son of Fatima to Zahra. And who am I to say that to you? That was his good step, first step. And on the day of Ashura, he started looking right and left and making that same huh, math equations. He started moving numbers up and down. What am I doing here? That is a question you have to ask yourself. And what Hor did and what Hor said is what every one of us goes through every day. Standing between two, one good, one evil. Came to Umar ibn Sa'ad, what are we doing here? Are we fighting this man? Yes. On one side, you have the heads falling off. And on the other side, you have their limbs, their hands, their legs falling off. E Allah, we are killing them. Yes, we're fighting them. What did he say? He said those words. Inni ukhayyiru nafsi bayna al-jannati wal-nar. I see myself between two. One that takes me to paradise and the other to hellfire. Inni wallahu khayyiru nafsi bayna al-jannati wal-nar. Fa wallah la akhtaru ala al-jannati shay'a walaw qutta'at walaw hurraq. If they cut me into pieces and they burn me. And he came to Aba Abdullah al Hussein, his head bowed down, and he said, Sayyidi wa Mawlai, Halim and Tawbah, can I ask your forgiveness? Inshallah, one night we'll be speaking about Tawbah. Tonight, it's about the consequences of a person who becomes a slave, who gives in. You find one who gave in. And that was Umar ibn Sa'd to his desires and he didn't get anything. He didn't gain anything. No, the governorship, nor a prize, nothing. And you find another who is Hur ibn Yazid al-Riyahi, who is one of the reasons for the Imam to be killed in Karbala. But when you go to Karbala to do the ziyarah, you say, what is Hur buried? They take you with a taxi, you come down and you say, Assalamu alaikum ya Hur. You praise him. See the difference? And those moments can change a person's life. Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib Ali Abdul Salati was salam in Dua al Kumail, he says about those consequences of the sins. What does he say? If you read Dua al Kumail, you find those wordings, Allahumma ghafirli ad-dunub al-lati tahtikul asan. The consequences of those sins. Because every sin, there is a consequence for it. This world was created with rules and laws. When the atheists come and they say, the atheists, like Richard Dawkins, so on and so forth, Sam Harris and others, they come and say, that this world because of the evolution and the big bang theory and such and such wasn't created by an intelligent being we say that if this world was created by an intelligent being that he was by allah the almighty it also has set of rules and laws like you do in every city if you go to any city in Australia, in United States of America, in United Kingdom, any city in the world, they have rules for the driving, rules and laws for building everything. Every council here has its own set of rules and laws of the zoning and all that. 
Just think of it. This world, this world that we live in, doesn't have set of rules and laws. Of course it does. Of course it does. That is why the Imam says, "Allahumma ghfir li al-dunub al-lati tahtik al-asam." Those then that you have broken a rule, a law by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that He appointed to me and you, you've broken it. And there are consequences for it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the first ayah in the Quran al-Kareem, and the holiest ayah in the Quran al-Kareem is which ayah? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. That is the holiest ayah in the Quran al-Kareem. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allah is merciful. Allah is magnificent. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allah forgives. But uh, there are a set of rules that we have to abide to. We find in the Quran Kareem, there's ayat, verses that describe to me and you, Jannah, paradise. And there are ayat, verses that describe inferno, hellfire. So what does he say? Oh Allah, forgive me for those of my sins which tear apart safeguards. Allahumma ghfir li al-dhunub al-lati tunzil al-niqam Oh Allah, forgive me for those sins which draw down calamities. You always say, why this is happening to me? Look down of what you're doing. What have you do been doing all this time? What kind of rules, laws have you been breaking that are set by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Those sins they bring down calamities. And when we come, inshallah, I speak about those sins. Allahumma ghafir li al-dhunub al-lati tughayyiru al-na'am. Tughayyiru al-na'am. What does that mean? Oh Allah, forgive me for those sins which they alter the blessings. Yeah, na'ma becomes niqma. It's a na'ma, but it's a niqma. Allah has changed it because of the sins. You haven't asked any forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now we are in the nights of Ramadan. And there are people that don't even care. Well, so what? It comes and it goes. That's why Imam al-Sadiq alayhi abdul salati was salam, they came to him, the Shia, the companions, the Imam looked at them and he said, are you fasting today? They said, yes, we are fasting Ramadan. The Imam said to them, do not say Ramadan. But say Shahr Ramadan and do not say Ramadan came and Ramadan left. Shahr Ramadan came with its blessings, with the month of mercy, month of forgiveness. Did you do anything in this month or you just got hungry and then you ate and you drank and that was it? لا تقولوا رمضان بل قولوا شهر رمضان فإنكم لا تعلمون ما رمضان. Do not say Ramadan, say Shahru Ramadan. Now, the Imam continues and he says, Allahumma ghfir li al-dhunub al-lati tahbisu al-dua. I supplicate, I say, God, give me, give me. There is nothing coming to my way. Why? Look what's going on. Brothers, if you want to now build anything, a granny flat, let's say granny flat. You go to the council and you put a TA out and you tell them, I want to build this granny flat on this land they come and they ask you to do reports i know this because i'm building a project imam ali college so i know this so what do they ask you see if the dirt the earth is good for for it to be built on if not there's problems you can't build anything on it now if a person comes and says i want to build a sky tower right next to the See next to the beach on the sand. I told you, you can't do that. Why? Because the foundation of it is not strong enough. Whatever you build is going to fall. You have to find somewhere that is strong enough for you to build there. Now, if a person does those sins and then he asks Allah for his dua to be answered, Allah says that I will not accept your dua. If you haven't asked forgiveness for the ones that you have done before. And in Dua Al-Kumail, Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib, Ali Abdul Salati was salam, 
هي هي نريد اللهم اغفر لي الذنوب التي تحبس الدعاء او الله forgive me for those sins which hold back supplications so they don't go up you just stay there floating and then they fall back on your head this is what the imam is saying this is what the hadith the ayat the all coming to اللهم اغفر لي كل ذنب اذنبته وكل خطيئه اخطاتها sins in general they are ugly in general they are dangerous they bring you closer and closer and closer and closer to the damnation running away from the sins not doing any of that brings you closer and closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam in one of the hadith he mentions he says qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam idha kathura zina ba'di kathura mawtul fujah what does he say if adultery after me increases so does sudden death mawtul fujah sudden death heart attack someone just passed away you might say why and when zina adultery increases so does sudden death this hadith is a long hadith i have chosen some of it what does he say again in another one وَإِذَا مَنَعُ الزَّكَاتِ مَنَعَتِ الْأَرْضُ بَرَكَاتِهَا مِنَ الزَّرْعِ وَالثِّمَارِ وَالْمَعَادِنِ And if alms, charity, are prohibited, don't give. Have you seen this? I don't know if you've seen it. Unfortunately, this is what happens in some communities. As soon as someone says, I have a project, Ramadan hampers. They like to buy a lot of food and give them away to the poor, to the needy in Iraq, in Iran, in Syria, in Yemen, in Afghanistan. A person puts his hand into his pocket to get some money out. You find his friend right next to him and he says, well, brother, what are you doing? How do you know he's telling the truth? Where do you know this money is going? Are you, can, you, can you trust him? He starts to do what? Put doubt in his mind. What is he doing? Zakat, sadaqah. He's preventing that to go up, to give to the people. What did Rasulullah says in this hadith? وَإِذَا مَنَعُوا الزَّكَاتِ مَنَعَتِ الْأَرْضُ بَرَكَاتِهَا مِنَ الزَّرْعِ وَالثِّمَارِ وَالْمَعَادِنِ Drought, drought. What happened the past year? What did we have in Australia? Drought. And they started to collect money, sending to the farms, to the farmers, so that we can get milk. And if you go right now, today, to buy a bottle of milk, they write on it for the drought victims. Pay 10 cents extra, and we are raising money for them. They don't look into why this happened in the first place. When you find people starving to death, in some countries starving to death and then you find other people in another countries i want to mention when it comes to iftar they spend thousands of dollars for 20 30 people and then all the extra food goes in the bin a few years back i was in one of the middle eastern countries in the gulf second night of shahar ramadan al mubarak i saw the newspaper the first page, the title page, having a picture that covered the whole title page, the first page, showing the extra food, extra food, more than one ton, one ton being thrown away. Now, same time you find people in Africa starving to death. You find people in Afghanistan, on a cup of water, they break their fast. What does the Prophet say? Look, that is the beauty of Islam. Last night, we spoke about the benefits of the month of Ramadan. And unfortunately, I think it didn't work. My message didn't go across. But we have a religion, prophets. We have imams. We have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us what are the benefits of this month. As I said last night, if they tell you today you can invest in a, co in a company 
that you know that will be successful tomorrow, how much would you invest? You're all life saving because you know. The Prophet ﷺ says how this month is blessed. Every moment counts. But we have people that don't take advantage of this. On the same, you find that the Prophet and the Imams tell us of the calamities that if we do this action, this is what happens to us. Find me in any other religion that is so clear and detailed in any form like that. The Prophet continues, وَإِذَا قَطَعُوا الْأَرْحَامِ جُعْلَتِ الْأَمْوَالِ فِي أَيْدِ الْأَشْرَارِ And if relationship of kinship is severed, wealth falls in the hands of the wicked. I don't speak with my brother. I don't speak with my sister. Why? Because my father passed away. We had a piece of land in that country. We always hear that. And he wanted that piece of land. And then uh, and we start the whole conflict and we don't talk with each other. We are on the same street. But I haven't said hi to my brother for more than five years. MashaAllah. I praise you for that. Qada'atul Rahim. You are severing that. You are closing up your relationship with your kinship. And what happens with that? If relationship with the kinship is severed, what did the Prophet say? Money, wealth falls down in the hand of the wicked. In the hand of? the wicked now you find financial problems spreading around the world and when you talk about that in a bracket when you speak anything like this they tell you oh he's a religious nut job that's why he's talking like this he's coming up with this you know stuff that if you do that this, this is what the prophet made it clear if you close those ties allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring you what the wealth falls down in the hand of the wicked and you see with your own two eyes and what is the relationship what is salatul rahim salatul rahim is saying salamu alaikum salatul rahim is having a good relationship with your brother your sister with your mother your kinship your friend your family if you look around how many people you know they have closed that down even if we live in a country that is far away, we came here, some of us, to close that conflicts down. But we come here with the same problems and we spread them. I said with one of the communities, if there are two people of you in an island far away, every one of you will open a center. Why? Because you can't work together. You can't work together. Every one of you has this different mindset. So the Prophet Sallallahu says it clearly. وَإِذَا قَطَعُوا الْأَرْحَامِ جُعْلَتِ الْأَمْوَالِ فِي أَيْدِ الْأَشْرَارِ وَإِذَا لَمْ يَأْمُرُوا بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَلَمْ يَنْهَوْ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَلَمْ يَتَّبِعُوا الْأَخْيَارَ مِنْ أَهْلِ بَيْتِي صَلَّتَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِمْ أَشْرَارَهُمْ فَيَدْعُوا عِنْدَ ذَلِكَ خِيَارَهُمْ فَلَا يُسْتَجَابُوا لَهُمْ أَمْرُ بِالْمَعْرُوف when nahi al munkar is to enjoin, enjoining good and forbidding the evil. Amr bil ma'roof wa nahi al munkar. With a nice approach. Brother, there is a program tonight in the Husayniyyah. We have iftar. Come to it. Fadl. When he comes here, he says prayer. Even if that person is not even religious, he prays two or three rak'at and then he eats. And it's fine if he wants to leave after that. But this is Amr bin Ma'roof. You're helping him. You bring him to the good side. When When you see those evil happening in the society, in the community, you have to point out to them. I make it very short because of the timing. A tribe in the time of one of the prophets of Bani Israel, Allah sent to them the adab, the torment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wiped down all of them. Prophet Musa alayhi abdullah salati was salam said, Ya Rabbil Alameen, wasn't any of them good? He said, yes. Few were good people. Listen to these parts. Few were good people. But they are also sins. Sinners as well. How? 
Did they do the same scene? No. But what did they do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Musa, they did not do Amr bin Ma'ruf wa Nahi al Munkar. They saw the evil happening in front of their eyes, but they didn't see anything. When they didn't say anything, they are also sinners. Even if they were standing praying Salat al Layl every night and prostrating before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because they didn't do enjoying the good and forbidding the wrong, the evil, they are also part of that. And this is the same problems we have today and it's spreading around. If you look at our families, at our children, 24 hours, the phone is right in his hands. With a high speed internet, without any parental guidance or parental supervision, one site after the other, surfing the net, seeing the wall in his hand. And he's a five year old, six year old, seven year old. Or with the teenagers, you see them surfing the net, and inshallah, one night when we have more numbers. I will be speaking about that because we have became slaves. What was the question in the beginning of the majlis? Are we slaves or are we free of those? If you look around, you find some of us go back to yourself. You don't be judgmental saying, yes, I know a person who used to do that. Look at your own life, your own family that you have control and responsibility on them find out are we slaves or are we free from all those things that have taken over the world and you tell the answer to yourself and see if you can change it because we say allahumma ajjil waliyyika al-faraj we say allahumma kulla waliyyika al-hujjat ibn al-hasan why he doesn't come people always say that why doesn't he come? Chura Imam Nimiyat. We say that in Farsi. Imam We always say that. And we love to point fingers at one another, saying, he's a problem, he's a problem, he's a problem, he's a problem. But we don't look at our own lives. Start with your own family. If you self change your own family, then you can change the rest of the people. And that's how it works. That's how it works. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. اللهم كل وليك الحجب ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا يا رب الحسين بحق الحسين اشف صدر الحسين بظهور الحجة يا رب الحسين بحق الحسين اشفي صدر الحسين بظهور الحجة يا رب الحسين بحق الحسين اشفي صدر الحسين بظهور الحجة عوذ بالجلال وجهك الكريم أن ينقضي عني شهر رمضان أو يطلع الفجر من ليلة هذه ولك قبلي تبعة أو ذنب تعذبني عليه اللهم صل على محمد وال محمد اللهم عجل لوليك الفرج اللهم عجل فرجه سهل مخرجه اجعل عواقب أمورنا خيرا يا رب العالمين هذا والحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة والسلام على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين